Hi! Welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you're here. Today I'm going to be doing a part two on DPDR or depersonalization, derealization. This is something that I can speak to very well because it's something that I lived with for quite a long time. But first, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please hit the subscribe button below. I'd really appreciate it and it only takes a couple of seconds. So one of the first questions that I got after posting my initial DPDR recovery video was that how long did I have this for and how long did I struggle with it for? So I would say I had it pretty consistently for about eight or nine months. And when I say consistently, I mean that I had it every single day and there was no breaks in between. So it almost was as if I was living in this constant fog. For the derealization, it felt like a constant dreamlike state, but I knew that I was awake, but it felt like I wasn't fully awake. And for depersonalization, it felt like I could constantly see myself from outside of my body. Like I was just kind of like standing over myself, which was really crazy when I was like at work or trying to do things that I had to get done and be good at. And I constantly was watching myself. It was a very crazy experience. So I would say it was about eight or nine months of consistently, you know, having it. After some time, I decided I really needed to seek help from someone who specialized in DPDR, right? And that was a really good decision that I made on my part because I started to learn about what exactly it is and that helped me reduce a lot of the fear around DPDR, which helped to reduce DPDR in general. So I know in my last video I talked a lot about kind of accepting it and allowing it to be there and that was really what helped me and I stand by that 100 hundred percent that is what helped me and I know that that's not easy so learning how to do that took a lot of time and it definitely wasn't like yeah no problem I can just accept this not at all. I really had to practice it and the more that I practice it the more that I became okay with it and I wouldn't say I felt good about having it I don't think there was ever a moment where I was like yes like I'm totally okay with having this but I reduced a lot of the fear around derealization, depersonalization. And that was huge because when you are afraid and when you act afraid, the derealization, depersonalization gets thicker because it's like, oh, she's afraid, like she needs more help. So your brain starts producing more of that fog and it ends up doing the exact opposite of what you wanted it to do. So I knew that the fear wasn't working and I knew that I couldn't continue fearing it. So I knew that I had to kind of drop off that fear. And I'm really grateful for being able to do that because it really did help me a lot. Once I started practicing DPDR allowance and acceptance and kind of learning how to sit with those uncomfortable feelings, I started to notice breaks in the DPDR. And what I mean by that is bit by bit, it would start to go away. So I started with having it consistently and then a few, I would say maybe two or three months later of practicing the allowance every single day, I noticed, okay, I have one hour break here and another hour break here. And today I only had DPDR for seven hours and not the whole 24 hours. So I would notice these moments of clarity and I would hang on to those moments of clarity. I would be like, oh, it feels so good. And what those moments of clarity did was they gave me hope. And that hope told me that there is one day that you will get there where you're going to be able to live a life without the DPDR again. And I really hung on to that. And I really kept that kind of at the forefront of my mind. And I, I, I kept it as like the light at the end of my tunnel. So as I continue to practice allowance and I continue to kind of sit with the DPDR and really reduce a lot of the fear around it, I noticed more and more of these breaks. Eventually, it became days where I didn't have the DPDR, and then it became weeks, and then it stopped coming around at all. And something happened a few months ago in my life that was um, really difficult for me to deal with. It was a very tragic thing that happened, and I was sure that the DPDR would come back full force, and it didn't. So I really believe that for me personally, understanding that it's just another kind of thing that my brain wants to do to protect me from all this perceived threat, all the anxiety, all the trauma, my brain is really trying hard to protect me. And if I can show and tell my brain that I have nothing to be protected from, 
it will reduce and I was 100% correct in that. There's also a few books that I recommend for you. I'll leave them down in the description below. Not sponsored in any way, but I really do think that they will help you. Just know that if you are going through very heavy or thick DPDR right now, I know that you can do it too. I know many people who have recovered from DPDR. I would really recommend reaching out to a specialist and working with someone who knows specifically about it. One thing in my journey that was interesting was someone that I worked with a while ago, she had never dealt with anyone who had DPDR. And that was very hard for me to get my head around because it made me feel as though like I was an alien. I was like, is there something wrong with me that I have this? And then of course I went to Google and I started searching, why do I have this fog-like sensation? And why do I feel like I'm constantly living in a dream? And of course Google tells you a million things that could be wrong with you and you're very nervous about it and it only makes it worse. So I'm really happy that there's a lot of information about it now on the internet and it is something that I will always speak about because I want to normalize it and I want to help people feel less afraid of it. I know it is probably, in my opinion, the scariest hands down symptom of anxiety and trauma. And um, if you are dealing with it right now, all my love and sympathy goes out to you. And I hope that I can be a light to you to tell you, you will get out of it too. Work with someone who specializes in it, read the books down below and try the allowance and try to sit with it and try to reduce the fear around it. Consistency is everything, I think. If you, know, you have some days where you're able to kind of let it be there, but then other days you're really fearing and fighting the feeling, it doesn't work as well. So kind of practicing and getting down, okay, I really need to be consistent with the way that I respond to the DPDR and it will listen to me because it's always watching and always listening. I think that's really key. So that's probably my biggest takeaway from my experience with DPDR. Two to three months after I started noticing some breaks, five to six months in, I was noticing weeks where I didn't have it. And I would say it was about at the eighth, eight month mark that I really didn't have the DPDR anymore. And since then I've been golden. So it was about over a year of, of a journey, but one that was well worth it. One that was not easy, but one that is a story to tell and hopefully will get you through these tough times too. If you have any more questions, questions for me or for my journey with DPDR or anxiety, feel free to leave them in the comments below so that I can answer them in a future video. And please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thank you.